teach you how to make these adorable stockings. So it has this flat front and then a toe and a heel and a hanger and I put a little heat transfer vinyl shape on it. You can get the pattern to make these stockings in the link below. This is a list of the supplies you'll need, but on the pattern you'll get a lot more details of the fabric that you'll need and how much and everything. You'll need some Christmas fabric, and I did mix and match coordinating, so I got a different fabric for each stocking that I was going to make. So I was making seven stockings, so I got seven different Christmas fabrics, and then I mix and match them. You also need fusible fleece backing and muslin liner. The other supplies that you'll need are coordinating thread that matches your fabric. You'll also need some heat transfer vinyl in whatever color would match. You'll need scissors and pins, of course, and a sewing machine and an iron and ironing board. Check the pattern for more information on how much of the fabrics that you'll need. I had made these hangers because I don't have a fireplace or a mantle or anything. So I made the little shape on here to match the hanger that is theirs. Included with the pattern are coordinating cut files. There's a smaller one for the stocking and a larger one for the stocking hanger. I'm not going to show you how to make the hangers, but I'll just explain it a little bit. You'll just sand it and stain it whatever color you want. Place the vinyl on there. Make sure you measure it so it's in the middle and that you leave space for your hanger and then put a finish on it, and then drill holes and hang your hanger on there. And then I just put command strips on the back to hang it on there. If you will be cutting your own patterns with pattern fabric, there's a link to the patterns below. There are two types of patterns. One is a PDF that you can cut out, the other is an SVG file that you can use to cut with a Cricut Maker. You're gonna print out all of the patterns, this on regular paper, and then we're just going to tape those together. So first, you're going to cut them. So you just, you want to just cut off this part where there's no line so that you can line them up better. So I'm just going to cut that one. This is my main stocking part. I made guidelines in some places. If they're just kind of a long line, it's hard to see. So I'm going to try to line up these two lines right here. So go to a window and line them up really good. I just lined them up and taped it there. This is main stocking three and main stocking four. I put those two together, just lining up all of those lines. We'll do the same thing, the one and two onto the three and four, line up all the lines and tape it. And then you'll probably want to do a little bit more tape, especially kind of on the edges where you're going to be cutting so that it doesn't come apart. Just make sure you don't cut those. That's just so that when you go back to put the heel and toe on, you can kind of see how it's supposed to look. But you'll just do the same thing with the wraps. So the wraps, I put inch marks. So you can see and then you just line up inch 8 goes there and inch 16 so you just line up those inch marks to do the wrap. So I actually moved this hanger to the wrap because it's the same fabric as the wrap on the pattern. So here's the heel and the toe so you just need one of each of these and then when you cut it out you'll just fold it over so that you get two that are the opposite direction. The wrap border is a little bit different. All it is is a really long rectangle. So you have two things you could do. You could just cut a strip of the fabric C that are an inch and a half wide by 29 inches long. If not, then you can cut this up and piece it together. So it's the same as like the wrap. You just cut out each of these strips. There's four strips and then you're just gonna match up. So inch 10 and inch 10 would match up. You just overlap them all the way down. It should be 29 inches long. That is probably more work than just measuring and cutting, but just so that you have the pattern, you know what it's supposed to look like. So once you have the pattern all taped together, each piece, then you need to get the fabric that you use to make patterns. If you are only making one stocking, you could probably just 
cut this out and put it right on the fabric and pin it on but it's not going to be as durable as the pattern fabric so if you're making more than one then you're going to want to make an actual pattern on the pattern fabric so that you can use it and reuse it and reuse it and it'll be okay. I wouldn't even cut this ahead of time, just leave it as it is with the edges and then pin it onto the pattern fabric and just cut around. Then you have your pattern for each piece of the stocking. We're going to lay all the patterns on it and I'm actually going to cut one thing out at a time but I'll just put all of the patterns on just to show you how they'll fit on there. Some of them you have to fold the fabric because you're doubling it so um, then I'm not going to do them all at the same time. So those will kind of go on like that and then these you kind of just fit in in the scraps. First I'm going to start with this long skinny piece. I'm just going to go right along the borders. You can just use that as your edge. Then we will cut out this piece. Then I'm going to do this, the wrap piece. This is the part I just cut out right here. So I'm just going to line that up with the bottom of that and pin that on. Then we'll cut that piece out. The stocking piece, we have to fold over because we need a front and a back that are going the opposite direction. So if you have a pattern on your fabric, like this one has this diagonal plaid pattern, and you, if you care which kind of how it looks on the stocking, then you want to Make sure that when you put the pattern on that it's kind of doing what you want it to do. And I am going to put my fold right at the top of my pattern and then I can just cut right along that to separate the two so that I've got the right side of the fabric on the back and on the front and then it's going to cut both sides for me at the same time. Then we'll cut that out. I'm going to start up here and go all the way around. Now I just go to the top where the fold is and just stick the scissors in my fold and pull it tight and cut on the fold. And that separates my back and my front. Now I've just got some kind of scraps and I'm just going to find a place where I can fit my heel and my toe where I can, it's kind of situate it how I need to so that I can fold it over and be able to have the same thing on both sides. And then pin it on, then I'm going to cut these out. Okay, now I have each piece of the stocking in this color. So I have the main stocking, the toe of the heel, the wrap, and the wrap border. I forgot to cut out the hanger piece. Now I'm doing that. So you'll just repeat that same process for each different fabric that you have and for however many stockings you're going to do. The amount of fabric that you get will sort of depend on the fabric that you choose and kind of the patterns on it. So for most of mine, it didn't matter which way I put them on, and so I got a third of a yard. For this one, it's got these stripes and the polka dots together, and I wanted, on the main part of the stocking, I wanted the stripes going vertically, and on the wrap, I wanted the stripes going horizontally, and then on the wrap border, I wanted them going vertically. On the toe and the heel, I don't really care. So I just had to calculate it a little bit differently. Here are all the pieces to that fabric. It took me about two thirds of a yard. If you're going to make it with the Cricut Maker, 
this is just a little bit of an explanation of what you'll do. You should know how to use the machine, so I'm not going to go through that. But I'll just kind of explain the pieces and how it'll work. To be able to cut almost all of the pieces with the maker, you'll have to have the 12 by 24 inch mat for the fabric. If you don't have that, then you can do some of them, but not all of them. Each different fabric that you're going to use is in a different color. These are the stocking front and back, the main part, and those will be in separate SVG files. And then there's this one, so they'll be green. This is fabric B, and those two will be in the same file. You can just stick them on there just like that. And this one, the wrap border, is 29 inches long, so you won't be able to put that in the Cricut Maker, but it's just a rectangle. So you would just have to cut a one, one and a half inch by 29 inch rectangle. And then these right here are the heels and the toes. And so you just, that's all together on there. That will be fabric C, and I'll just put it in like that and it will come out right. And then you'll also get a little guide. So I just kind of made this guide because on the SVGs, the text and stuff won't work. So I just kind of put on here to remind you which shape is for what and which fabric it should be as a little help. Now I have all of the stocking pieces cut out and I'm going to mix and match to kind of mix them all together. So. I'm thinking in terms of an A fabric, a B fabric, and a C fabric. So the A fabric will be main stocking. The B fabric will be the wrap that goes around it. And then the C fabric will be the border of the wrap and the heel and toe. So that's how I'm doing it, but you could mix and match any way that you want to. figured out how I want to put them together. Then just take each one and take all the pieces and fold them up together so you can remember how you had it. The next step is to cut out the batting. One side has the little bump so you'll iron on and then the other side is soft and fuzzy. Just make sure that you do two pieces for each stocking. So you want one going this way and one going this way for each stocking. So you'll just lay the pattern on the batting and line it up against the straight edge anytime that that's possible. Less cutting is fabulous. And then you'll just pin it down. Then you'll just cut it out. The way that I put them on the fleece, I just kind of went like this, and then like this, and then I did one going this way. So I could fit about five on about two thirds of a yard. This fleece is 46 inches wide. Next you'll cut the liner. I got muslin. This is 36 inches wide and you'll fold it in half so that you can cut both sides of one stocking at one time. So I put the pattern on and I can fit three stockings plus two wraps on one width basically. So I can fit one pattern of the wrap but I only need one for each stocking so then it is enough for two stockings. So I'll just pin the pattern on and then cut it out. Now we're going to fuse the batting and the fabric together. So I probably should have washed this. This one has some wrinkles so I'm going to iron just the fabric first. Get out the major wrinkles. I'm basically going to follow the instructions that are on the fabric, but do a few different things. I noticed when I cut it out, I don't know why, but it, the batting is a little bit smaller than the fabric. 
So I'm just going to put it down and then kind of push down and stretch it up and down and then out to the edges. So make sure that the part with the stuff that's going to fuse is on top. You can tell it's got little dots on it. And then I just put my fabric on top of it. On the instructions, it says to just um, put the iron on and hold it. But when I did that, it made big lines. So what I'm going to do is start on one end and then I'm going to go back and forth 10 times. So each spot is getting 10 seconds, but I'm constantly moving instead. So I'm not making marks. And I'll move up on the stocking and I'll overlap a little bit, go back and forth. Then you're going to repeat that with the other side. Now we're going to sew on the heel and the toe. I chose colors for the thread that match the heel and the toe. Just whatever color kind of was the dominant color in the fabric. So I chose red, green, and white. You, could, you can do it a totally contrasting color if you want to. Whatever look you want to go with. First you're going to take your toe and your heel and just make sure that the uh, this edge is really smooth so if you have any threads that are coming off or any parts that you cut that weren't straight or smooth then you want to cut them these are the settings that i have my sewing machine on you can test it and do it however you want if you want a wider stitch or a skinnier stitch to make sure that the heel and the toe are lined up with each other you'll just flip these so that the right sides are together and line them up and then place them on one side of the toe do the same thing with the heel right sides are together line them up and then just take the other side of the stocking and line it up and then you'll just pin it so you'll take these two together and pull it up and just pin it right here. Because it's going zigzag and I want to line up the edge of the zigzag right here, so I'm just going to move my needle until it's on this side of the zigzag. I'm just going to try to line up the fabric with the needle, take my pin out. Now when you start sewing, you should go forward then back a little then forward but my sewing machine tends to catch really easily and so I'm just gonna go forward because if I try to go backwards on this for some reason it keeps catching. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna be sewing it anyway so the edge of it will, will stay in. Okay, so I'm just lining it up and then I just need to make sure that I'm keeping this edge of the zigzag right on the edge of my fabric. same thing on the heel. After you have sewn one side, just put them back together and make sure that they still line up. Sometimes when you sew it, it kind of moves a little bit. So just make sure they're still lined up before you sew the other one on. Now we're going to sew the two sides of the stocking together. So I put the two right sides together, line them up, and because we want the stitching on the toe and the heel to line up, I'm going to line those up, I'll line one up and pin it, and then line each one up and pin it so that it stays together, and then just pin a couple of times on the sides. I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch edge, so I'm just going to line my edge up with this little piece on the foot. I'm just going to go forward Gonna make some little cuts um, 
just so that it's easier for this edge to fold just kind of make some cuts make sure you don't go into where you stitched it um, just places where it's gonna need to have a little fold then I just need to turn it right side out so just grab the toe pull it through push the heel through and you're just gonna push along the seam push it out Fold it all. And then the way this shape is, it kind of has some rounded parts. I'm just going to try to push those out and I'll, um, when I iron it, I'll make sure that those are pushed all the way out. But there we go. Got the main part of the stocking all put together. Now you're going to iron the stocking just to give it a nice clean crease. So just push the seam out so that you're getting the right shape and then iron along the edge. These side ones like to kind of fold back in so and then you can iron the middle and then do the same thing on the other side. Now you'll just iron the liner to pre-wash it, which I probably should have, then you don't have to, but just to kind of get major wrinkles out. Now we're going to sew the liner. So you want to sew the liner just a little bit smaller than the stocking. The liner I'm going to line up right here on 3 eighths of an inch. So we'll just have a little bit more space inside. Now I'm just going to cut a little bit of the edge, um, just kind of where it curves, so that it will fold a little better and open up so I can iron it. Now we're going to iron the edges of the trim, so you've got both sides, and I'm going to fold them both the same way and then just make sure you're staying right on the seam edge and iron down and then you've got like little pieces because we cut it up so for the on the parts that curve so just iron up each little piece and then right here, I'm going to flip it and do it the other way. Then we're going to put it inside, so make sure they're face, both facing the same direction and just put your hand inside of the lining all the way down to the toe. And then the so the, where it's folded back, I'm going to put the seam and I put it in. I'm going to try to have the folded back side like on that side of my seam. And then it will go on the other side on that side so they don't have more fabric on one side than the other. So then I'm going to kind of go, so now I'm going in between the stocking and the lining and I'm just making sure that on this side the liner goes on top of the extra. Make sure it's all the way over next to the edge. Okay, then I do this, flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to make the flap on the stocking. 
I'm not going to explain how to do the heat transfer vinyl. If you have the stuff to do it, then you'll know how to do it. If you don't have the stuff to do it, then you can have somebody else do it. But I will just explain how to prepare it for that. You can put it on when you just have the one piece of fabric and haven't sewed it or anything. Or you can put it on after you've sewn the hem on. You'd probably be safer to do it after you've sewn the hem on, just because then if you accidentally mess up with sewing the hem on, then you're not going to mess up your shape. But I did it bef just when it was just a cut piece of fabric. So I had mine all measured out, but I'm going to put it, in, put it in the right place on the pattern so you'll know exactly where it goes. So just cut out the actual shape and then I just taped it on to where it needed to go. And then I actually put a little, like a little chalk mark on the edges, on this edge and on this edge. So that once we took the tape off, then we knew where it went. First I'm just going to iron this long piece. It's going to be the hem for the flap. I put together the outside fabric and then the liner and iron those. And I need to make sure that I don't iron my vinyl there. Now we're going to sew on the hem of the flap. I'm going to take my hem piece taking this edge of my hem piece to this edge of my fabric piece and I'm starting on the side that has my shape on it because that will be the one that's in front so again I want to do that one first because I have a little bit more control and when I'm doing the beginning I'm going to take the liner out okay so I've got those lined up and just so you can see it's going to hem there and then it's going to open up like that. Line it up and this curves a lot so you just have to keep moving your fabric and everything. So I'm going to flip it over so that my hem piece is on the bottom. The hem piece is straight and the other one is curvy so it's easier to have, for me at least, to have the straight one on the bottom and then turn the curvy one. I'm going to leave probably about a fourth of an inch. I'm going to go forward a little bit, back a little bit, and I have to be really careful when I go slow and stop because I need to move my top piece to line up with my bottom piece so that they curve together. My bottom piece just kind of stays straight. I turn my top piece. Now I've got the hem sewn onto the front piece. After I've sewn the hem onto the front piece, I'm going to iron it a little bit. It's easier to do it when there's only one on there, so I'm going to do one of them now. Make sure you know where your shape is so that you don't iron on top of that. Iron this extra fabric onto the hem piece so that that's kind of hidden in the hem. Make sure that your liner has stayed the same direction and then you're just going to lay this over the top of it. Just make sure you're getting it the right direction. So again, I'm starting on the side with the shape. I'm going to grab my liner and my hem that's already sewn onto the front piece. And then again, I put the right sides together. I'm just going to hold that corner and flip it. Okay. And then I just do the same thing that I just did. Now you iron the part of the liner. So you want to iron this extra into the hem and again make sure you know where your shape is. So 
so that you're careful not to iron onto that. Now we've got that on. And again, just make sure that those extra, those extra pieces are going into the hem as I iron it. Line them up. I'm just going to do kind of a little bit at a time. Line those up, make sure they're going the right way, and then I'm going to start on the fabric and slowly iron off the fabric onto the hem just to make a nice crease. Now we've got our flap that's going to fold over. When you iron the piece that's going to be used for the hanger, fold it over about a quarter of an inch. And then as you iron it, keep the iron over on this side. Don't iron the middle or the other side because if you iron it um, flat like that, it's going to have a harder time staying folded because you've already pressed it to be flat. So then I'm going to the other side. And press that corner, trying not to go into the center. And then I connect those two folded sides together and fold it down the center. Fold it in half. And then I'm going to iron the whole thing. I'm creasing it back up how it was, folding in the sides, and I'm folding it in half. And then we're going to sew it as close to the edge, to that folded edge, as we can. Pour it a little bit. For the hanger section, we're going to iron this in half now. And on mine, the edges didn't line up exactly. The one that kind of hangs out further, that's going to be my outside so that you don't see that. So you're just going to fold it down and fold it in half. And then you're just going to iron it to get it to crease. Hold it down for a few seconds so that you have a nice crease and it knows where it needs to fold. We have our wrap and our main stocking and our hanger. And inside of the main stocking is the lining. We're going to sew them all together finally. The first thing is to just make sure the edges of your fabric are all pretty even so that it'll be easier when you're sewing them together. I'm not going to pin the whole thing just because it kind of adjusts as I go around as I'm sewing. But we are going to, to pin the very first spot just to make sure we've got it in the right spot and going the right direction because it's just a little bit confusing. I am doing my stocking this direction. So toe is going this way. I'm going to have my swoop going this way. So my shape is on the same side as my toe. We're going to start the sewing right here because I want to make sure that this is in the right place so that this doesn't go off the edge. I want the edge of this just about a quarter of an inch in from the very side. So pay close attention right here. I'm going to open it up and make sure that my lining is open as well. So all I'm seeing inside is lining and no none of the stuffing. I put my wrap inside and I'm gonna go the outside of my wrap so this for this one will be the red part the outside of my wrap goes on the lining okay 
So I'm just gonna hold that and then I'm just gonna show you how it'll be so that it makes sense. So I'm gonna sew it right there, it'll fold down like that, and then this will fold down. So see how that'll work? Don't look at the edge where the seam of the lining is, because that's gonna be a little bit off from the outside. So look at the outside seam, and I wanna be about a quarter of an inch from that seam is where the edge of my hem is. I'm gonna put that where I want it, and then I'm gonna pin it. So I have that pin to, on the front, and I'm gonna do a pin on the back right behind it. And that is where I'm going to put my hanger. And mainly I'm just putting the pin in so that as I'm sewing around, I remember to stop and put the hanger in. I'm not gonna put it in right now because it will work better once I'm almost there. So I've got those two pins, one on the front that's connecting my wrap and then one on the back just to remind me to stop and put the hanger in. Now, reach inside and we're gonna flip the whole stocking inside out. Now my wrap is on the outside. So I'm gonna take this pin out. Be careful to keep it in the right place and I'm just gonna kinda roll this up right here so that I can get in here. Make sure that my bottom part of the stocking is out of the way. I'm trying to do about a half an inch hem just to make sure that I've got all of these different fabrics. If there's any variance in the, in the edge of them, I just want to make sure. And then I want it to be able to lay pretty flat because when it's shorter, it has a hard time laying flat. It kind of wants to stick up. So I go forward, and then back a little bit. So don't go too quickly because you want to be able to adjust and make sure you keep going straight. Make sure that you keep that bottom part back, not underneath it. I'm almost to the pin. Now I'm going to grab my hanger and I'm doing it so that the hanger matches the main part of the stocking, but I thought it could be cute too to have the hanger match this hem because they basically line up. Okay, I'm gonna take that pin out. It's just kind of my placement. All right, so the way that I wanna do it is that my hem, which is on this side, is going to go closest to the edge. So here is the edge of my stocking. And so I'm putting my hemmed edge on next to it. And again, I'm going about a quarter of an inch. And I made these a little longer, so this is gonna stick out about a quarter of an inch, because I wanted to be able to tell where it was and be able to keep it in place and all that. So you're gonna put it on the fabric, and it's going down. I kind of fill the hem where the edge of the stocking is and make sure it's lined up straight with that. And I'm going to really be careful to keep that in place. As I go, keep it straight and in place. And I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to go over it. And then I'm going to back over it again. And then I'm going to go over it again just to make sure that that is in there nice and snug because that's gonna have a little bit of weight on it. Now we've gone all the way around the stocking and now we're doing the bottom flap that goes underneath the top flap, but you sew it on over the top because it flips over, okay? So line it up with that. And I'm gonna go over it, and then I'm gonna go back over the last part back down. So just kind of flip that over and make sure they don't have any holes, that one of the fabrics wasn't shorter and didn't get picked up. Now we just want to cut off any strings, anything that's hanging out. 
This part you could do on a serger if you have one, but I don't have one. So basically what we're doing is just kind of getting all of these fabrics. I got tons of fabric right here, different fabrics that I just want to kind of bring them together so that they lay down better. So these are the settings that mine are on. So it's on length of about three and then I'm doing the zigzag and then the width is six. Just turn your knob and make sure the needle is over on the far side and make sure it's not coming off of your fabric. And you gotta keep making sure that that bottom, the other side of the stocking is not underneath you. Back a little. have a little zigzag all the way around to bring all of those fabrics together and help them lay flatter. Okay, then we're going to flip it right side out. So I just grab the toe, flip it right side out, push out my toes, push out my heel. Pull out the whole thing. Now we're just going to iron that down to help it stay down. So make sure the back is going down and the front. Hold that iron on there for a few seconds. Then we'll flip it, flip the wrap over. Fold it up about a quarter of an inch from where my seam is so that the liner is not at the very top so you don't see it as much. And then just kind of adjust it and we're going to iron that top, give it a little bit of a crease. This is what the stockings look like when they're all done.